I won't be singing as much tonight as the previous gentleman that you saw. And the reason that I am wearing the cowboy hat is that my fro becomes very annoying. Uh, and so forgive me for that. I'm, I'm just doing it for you. Um, as you can see, he put up the, the uh, slide that said that uh, the title of this was Documentaries and Community Service. And I tried to find the least interesting title for this talk that I possibly could. I think I succeeded quite well. Um, this may seem an odd topic since most documentaries are a form of community service anyway. Some documentary makers tell stories to make people aware of issues or to shed light on a particular person or group. Our films are meant to enlighten an audience on a particular topic, be it lighthearted or serious. But there are ways in the making of our documentaries that we can contribute so much more to our communities. In 2009, I accidentally started what would become a series of documentaries on Mexican-American history and culture in Tucson called the Cine Plaza at the Fox series. At the time, I thought I was testing out a new camera and gathering material for a, a bit of narration to set the context for the showing of some classic Mexican films. But along the way, it took on a life of its own, and now the sixth film in this series is in production. The first film was about the series' namesake, the Cine Plaza Theater, which was a place that showed Spanish language theaters, brought in stars of Mexican cinema, and for live, or pardon me, brought them in for live performances and held an amateur hour uh, that launched the careers of some of the local talent here in Tucson. Uh, it was torn down as part of the urban renewal program of the late 60s, and now that lovely statue of Pancho Villa uh, stands there instead. So, uh, progress. Um, with the help and guidance of my associate producers, uh, folklorico choreographer Julie Gallego and her father, historian Ralph Gonzalez, I started interviewing folks from the Mexican-American community who were there, who grew up there, who had warm memories of the events and the people there. And as I had when I created video content for the Tucson Citizen newspaper and as a writer for them before that, I transcribed every word that was said to see who told the story best and how to put this improbable puzzle that is a documentary together. Uh, at Julie's suggestion, I also started gathering uh, photos of the sources as they looked in the days when they were visiting the, the Cine Plaza, as well as historical photos of the vicinity and those sorts of things. But what ended up happening in every interview that I did was somewhere quickly into it, the interview went completely off the rails. And they stopped talking about the Cine Plaza and they started talking about what they wanted to talk about. And at first I found that irritating as hell um, because I had to transcribe all this stuff and what were they doing wasting my time talking about these things other than the Cine Plaza. But then over time I began to realize that what they were telling me was far more important than what I was asking. And that they were telling me the larger story of their lives and things that were most important to them. And so I started paying more attention to what they were saying beyond what I was asking them. I got calmer about the whole, the whole thing. And when two, three, four people started mentioning the same things, I realized I have another documentary. And this led to the second documentary, which was about Barrio Anita, uh, downtown, and the third one, which was about the, the uh, urban renewal uh, program, and the fourth on Barrio Hollywood, and they started talking about the old ballrooms, which led me to the El Casino Ballroom, uh, which is the topic that, of the film that uh, I produced last year. So the nature of my, my interviewing changed. I, I still asked pointed questions, but as I say, the sidetracks were what was really important. I took this tangent to tell you that this is the real story. When we interview people, they tell us much, much more than what we asked. Not all of it makes its way into our films, at least right away. But these folks know what they want to have out there. And they're extremely kind and generous to us as filmmakers in sharing this. So now I make it a point 
uh, to transcribe everything I do in Microsoft Word um, so that it becomes part of the database from which I make my film, but also so it can be turned over to the Arizona Historical Society so that people who are researching topics that may have not made it into my film can find the information that these people shared. And, you know, this is a first-hand account of history. You have to look at it as that. Um, and it's something that I would highly recommend that other documentary makers consider doing. Uh, it's really important. I'll also be turning over the raw footage of everything from all these films to the Arizona Historical Society. Not with the idea that people can use it right away, um, but with the idea that somewhere down the line, this will become a body of work that tells the story of our times uh, for that population. And I think it's important to that, do that as well. That's just one of the ways that documentary makers can serve our community. Another is in the, the filmmaking process itself. Um, when I started making the film Tucson's Heart and Soul, El Casino Ballroom, which is being featured this weekend in the Arizona International Film Festival, I had ulterior motives. Um, El Casino Ballroom is a place where people of all races and cultures have been welcomed since it opened its door which was pretty radical back in 1947 when they opened. And this was the days of segregation here in Tucson. One of the things that I uncovered when I was doing research on this was uh, a ticket from one of the other ballrooms, the Blue Moon. And on the ticket, uh, which was a Billy Eckstein show, was printed colored only show. So, in those days, it was a pretty, pretty radical idea for everybody to be able to come to one place and to enjoy the music or enjoy the wedding or the quinceanera or whatever happened to be going there, to have their political rallies, whatever they needed to do. Well, something happened along the way. Um, in the early 1990s, the roof blew off, or I should say half of the roof blew off of El Casino Ballroom. And when this happened, like every other business, they were living hand to mouth, and it closed. They didn't have the money, it was condemned by the fire department, and they didn't have the money to put it back in operation. And so for nine years, it sat dormant. And it nearly became a self-storage place. But in the late 1990s, there was an incredible group of guys uh, from the community. They were, they were just guys who were electricians and plumbers and um, guys who did drywall and guys that did roofing. And they said, we know how to do this. Let's do this. Let's get this place open. And so they came in on their own time, after working all day, they would come in and they would work until 10 o'clock at night, Monday through Thursday, and every day on Saturday. They were paid in beer, which uh, is a time-honored tradition. And uh, also the promise that when this thing was completed, they could have a day to do whatever they wanted to do in the El Casino Ballroom. And so in the year 2000, and I will resist the temptation to sing the Conan O'Brien version of the year 2000. Um, in the year 2000, it opened again. And um, when it did, the weddings, the quinceañeras, the concerts, all these things started happening again. But there was one group that had been a big part of El Casino. Back in the 1980s, in fact, for the last five years before the roof blew off, KXCI Radio was having its House Rockin' series there. And they brought in blues acts and zydeco acts and reggae acts and all kinds of things. And an Anglo audience that really wasn't comfortable all the time being in South Tucson suddenly began realizing this is the hottest destination in town. And so a whole new audience was, was built there. Well, when the roof blew off and they were closed for nine years, by the time they reopened, there was completely new management at El Casino Ballroom. 
And they knew nothing about that experience that their fans had had. And so there were no KXCI concerts when it reopened. So again, getting back to me having ulterior motives, um, I partnered in the making of this film with KXCI. Uh, I told them that I wanted them to help me to find people to be in the film who remembered the KXCI days. I lied uh, a little bit. And although that was true as well, but um, I really just wanted them to be involved and I wanted them to realize how much that experience had touched their fans. And so once that happened and once they were engaged, then I said to them, you know, the ballroom is going to be open the week after the premiere. How about if you guys uh, do a concert there? And to my shock and amazement, um, they did. And it was a huge success. They had an overflow crowd there. And then at Christmas time, they did another concert. And it was a huge success. Again, an overflow crowd. And they did another, uh, we're setting up another one for this July. So KXCI is, is back in the fold again. And I'm really happy about that. Um, another thing that I wanted to do was call attention to those guys, those you know, common working class guys who rebuilt El Casino Ballroom out of their own blood and sweat. And the architect for, for the rebuilding of El Casino was the grandson of the man who built it to begin with. And that was just a wonderful twist of fate. So being able to interview him, being able to interview all these guys, there's a great story in there about one of the guys who rebuilt El Casino Ballroom did it because his daughter was two years old and he wanted to have her quinceanera at El Casino Ballroom when she turned 15. Well, it happened that that was, that was last year while I was filming this. And so I got to film her quinceanera and put it in the film along with his story about how he wanted to do that. Finally, the other group that I, the other, the other subversive thing that I wanted to do out of this was to try and get another group of people together to finish El Casino Ballroom. And again, I'm delighted to say that there's now a committee together that is redoing the legal work for El Casino Ballroom, redoing the, the legal work for the Latin American Social Club that runs it, and we're creating something called the El Casino Foundation. And that will not only put the roof on the thing, but it will take it in new directions, just following the same course that they've been on for 65 years. That's an incredible thing. Even when I was editing the El Casino film, I was starting to work on the sixth film of the Cine Plaza series. This one is on the flourishing of mariachi and folklorico culture and how it's transformed the city of Tucson. And it has, culturally, economically, historically, and politically. Today, you see mariachi and folklorico programs in many of our area schools, and as a result, Latino students are more engaged, get better grades, stay out of gangs, graduate at higher numbers, and go on to college as never before. When our first youth mariachi, Los Changuitos Feos, the Ugly Little Monkeys, um, started in 1964, Tucson was busy systematically eradicating Mexican culture through urban renewal and physically punishing school kids for speaking Spanish. Today, mariachis and folklorico dancers have joined the saguaro cactus as the visual si symbols of our city, and that's a profound transformation. That's just part of it. This is a great story to tell and one that no doubt will spin off many side stories as the first ones did, and a ton of information about our, our history of our city. So in conclusion, there's so much we can do as documentary makers to make our communities, our states, our countries, our world a better place. What we do has power far beyond the audiences that see our films. I urge my fellow filmmakers to be generous with the knowledge shared with us, to celebrate the people who make huge things happen by st small, steady steps together, and to conspire in the promotion of fun and doing big things. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>